So for so many days, you didn't finish? Uh, no, but I can finish my homework. But... Are you finished? Thumbs up. Okay, give it to me. Later. All right, let's start the class. Okay, we are going to study word problems. Okay, you're not going to, yeah, so in this class, you are given some kind of problems and you try to figure out uh, uh, the answer. Okay, so it's different from the previous homework. You know, you are given the numbers of the computation. Okay, so this is not an easy problem. Depends how you analyze the data. Okay. All right, so the first problem, let's slowly work on the problem. Okay, the first problem is that the price of a car is equal to the price of a 10 bicycle, 100 bicycle, and the car is more expensive, right? And the price of a four boats is equal to the price of one car. The question is how many bicycles are equal to one boat? It means, you know, how many bicycles you can use to exchange with a one boat, okay? So there are several items here, car, bicycle, boat, three. You need to write down the relationship, right? among them and figure out like a one car, right? Let's say, let's use a car like a C, okay? One car and uh, yeah, right? One car equals 100 bicycles, right? Something like that, right? Make it easier, clear. Otherwise it's, you have to read the problem over and over again. And then four boats or oh, bicycle, right? Uh, we have to use the different letters, right? Okay, then four boat equals the price of one car. So now that's it. Then it's, you can easily set up the relationship between the price of boats and the price of bikes, um, bikes right? So here you see one car, one car, you, know, you have the same number here, right? So that's why four boats equals 100 bicycles. So we want to know one boat is equivalent to how many bicycles? You divide by four, right? Both sides, right? So one boat is gonna be 100 divided by four, right? Which is 25. So you can use the 25 bicycles to buy one boat. So those are the, yeah, you have to write down all the details. And as in this case, we just have one car, one car. So you can just set up a relationship between boat and the bicycle quickly. In some problems, the relationship is not that simple. You have to do the division uh, in order to, set up the relation, indirect relationship between two items. Okay. Well, you're late. <laughs> so this is uh, the first problem and we want to, <clears throat> yeah, we want to figure out the cost for, uh, you know, the equivalent cost for bicycles and one boat, okay? Let me, yeah, something arrived late, so I'm going to explain this problem again. So this is, a, we're, we're studying the word problems today, okay? And the word problems are different from the problems I gave to you before. You know, you are given numbers, just do the computations. But here you have to understand the given data and analyze the data and, uh, and, uh, and the write down the relationships and you simplify them, okay? So the idea is that you write down, okay, when you say uh, the, car, the price of one car equals the price of 100 bicycles, so you should write one car equals 100 bicycles. And then four, the price of four boats is equal to the price of one car. Then you can set up 
So the, the relationship between boats and the bicycles are not direct. It's indirect, right? It's not direct. So you have to go through the car in order to set the relationship. But it's clear here, four boats equals one car, and then one car equals 100 bicycles, okay? So four boats equals 100 bicycles. Then you can easily, you have to do the division, of course. Then you divide by four, and you get one boat equals 25 bicycles, okay? So yeah, Nina already got the answer earlier. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. So the next problem, you try and first, right? You have to figure it out, and right? the price of one pen, pen equals three pencils. That means equals the price of three pencils. The price of a two erasers equals that of 12 pencils. So you, this is all, so eraser is a very big eraser, okay? We assume it's a very fancy one, okay? And the question is, how many pens cost the same as one eraser? Okay, so the relationship between pen and eraser is, is indirect. There is a direct relationship between pen and pencil, and pencil and eraser. So, so yeah, but the relationship between pen and eraser is indirect. But we want to find the link between them, okay? Going through the uh, uh, pencil, uh, yeah, pencils. So can you, can you figure it out, okay? Can you figure it out when you rest, uh, you can use the when you rest uh, to exchange how many pens. Yeah, you have a very big, you know, fancy rest. It's pretty expensive one. Maybe cost the $5, okay? It's like that. Pencil is cheap. Okay. Yeah, do it first. You have a piece of paper and then use a pen and figure it out, okay? This is kind of like, a, you know, you want to exchange the items with the brothers, right? You know, sometimes you do that, right? One eraser, yeah, equals, no, yeah, two erasers equals 12 pencils. Yeah, two erasers, I should, yeah. Two erasers, here, two erasers. Let's put a two here, read it, it's easy, right? Two erasers, 12 pencils. And the one pencil, yeah, equals three, uh, uh, one pen equals three pencils. Kind of like that, you know, right? So you can, you can make exchange, right? So now you have, uh, uh, when you rest, uh, how many pens you can get? Can you figure it out? <laughs> what? Two. Huh? Two. Two? Okay, what's your name? Aaron. Okay, Aaron. Okay, so Nina got, uh, what do you get? The answer is two, she says. Okay, are you still working on the problems, some of you? Don't just sit there, okay? Now this is the time you want to exchange sign Pokemon cards, for example, all kinds of things you have to do. So <laughs> you have to do the calculation. Don't be cheated, right? Flourished by your brother or sister when you exchange items with them. So, okay, so let's see. One pen, right, equals three pencils. Let's like that, right? And the two erasers, you write down this, right? Erasers equals 12 pencils, and I want to know uh, one eraser, you call how many pencils? So you just need to know one eraser, right? So two erasers is 12 pencils. So you divide by two, so one eraser, right, equals six pencils, then, right, because one pen equals three pencils, so six pencils equals what? Two pens, right? So that's why it's two pens. So one eraser equals two pens. That you can do going through like that, right? Because this is going to be here, right? And this goes to here. Look at this, right? Yeah, two erasers equals 12 pencils. You have to write down that first before you, okay? 
And, uh, and uh, so when you rest, it costs six pencils. And uh, if then you look at the top line, one penny equals three pencils. Okay, one point, three pencils equals one pen. So six pencils equals two pen. That's why you can use it, you when you rest it to exchange for, for two, two pens. Right? Yeah. All right, so that's the, uh, yeah, this is where how to do that. Okay, I hope it's also online. You should give me the answer too. Right, this is a, when you do the homework. Don't just give me the number. I want to sh you show me some ideas. How do you figure out the numbers? Okay, it should be the readable means other people can understand what they're doing. You know, you have to translate your ideas in onto a paper and write down this. Okay, so the next one. Just multiplication. Yes, yeah, so the next one is multiplication. Yeah, let me. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's a problem. One day has 24 hours, you know that. One hour I call has. 60 minutes, one minute equals 60 seconds. Seconds, how many seconds are in three days? You may use a calculator or not, it's up to you. But you can do the multiplication quickly. Okay. Okay. So, first you have to figure out how many seconds in one day, right? That's my hint. Then, then you try to figure out how many seconds in three days. Yeah, are you able to do the multiplication? Yeah. Okay, good. If you don't. So you have to do step by step, okay? Uh, then you can do backward, you can do forward, okay? It's up to you, okay? For example, uh, yeah, there, there's two ways to do, right? Forward means three days, right? Equals how many hours? three times 24 hours, right? And three times 24 equals what? Can you do the multiplication? 72, right? Is it true? Yeah. yeah. 72 hours, then one hour equals 60 minutes. So you have the 72 times 60. Yeah, before, yeah. Then you can, you have to continue to the multiplication. Okay. So let's do the multiplication. And then the 72 times 60, right, is going to be, uh, you know, 72 times 60, right? Mm -hmm. 4,320. Okay, then one minute equals 60 seconds. Okay, then you put, don't forget the units, okay, six seconds. Then you will get, uh, then you get 259,200 uh, seconds. Wow. Now, this is the one way to do this. So go call forward. Backward is you're trying to see one minute equals six seconds. So one hour equals how many seconds, right? 66. So you do that step by backward. You know, one hour equals 60 minutes, but one minute equals 60 seconds. So, so this will be a little bit easier computation actually. And this is a second, right? Then one day, equals 24 hours, but 24 hours equals 
3,600 seconds, okay? Then you, you do the multiplication of that first, okay? Then, then uh, 24 times 300, that's 3,600. It's gonna be, and uh, now some students even memorize this after they do this. So when in the future you can write down the answer immediately. Oh, remember how many seconds in one day. All you have to do is just do, uh, <coughs> do one uh, computation. Okay, so three days is just three times of this. Okay, and you multiply this out times three, you get same answer, right? Times three, and then 259,200 seconds. So it's up to you, you know, which way it's backward, forward, there's no difference. Okay, this is just simply just a multiplication. It'll be even actually a little bit easier than the previous problems. Okay. All right, so the, let's do the next one. Uh, the next one is a little bit, uh, Into. Yeah, next one. Let's do the next one problem. I will give you a minute to think about, okay? One can use a two horses to exchange for six cows, two cows for six piggers, three piggers for 24 chickens, okay? So the question is how many chickens are needed to exchange for one horse? One house is equal to six cows, yeah. Cost is more expensive than cows, okay? No, actually two houses to exchange for six cows, okay? There's so many things here connected, one by one next to each other. But the, uh, the relationship between house, horses and, and chickens is indirect, one right? Hmm? I don't know. You have to. You have to figure out the relation between chicken and the horse. Horse, yeah. But you know that which is on the on the table of the of, of the price. You see that okay. You can use two horses to exchange for six cows. You can use two cows to exchange for six piggers. You can three piggers can exchange for. You can use to exchange for 24 chicken. But how many chicken you needed to, to get the one horse? Okay, so please do this problem. So are you can you write down the data and figure it out by yourself? Yeah, you probably have to do the division, you know, multiplication. Yeah, just like what I show you. Uh, yeah, you have to need to write down, you know, the idea is like that, two, uh, if they are all the letters are different, then just like a two H equals six C, something like that, right? Okay, and uh, <coughs> two C equals six piggers, three piggers equals 24, okay, chicken. So I, uh, uh, let me, <laughs> Let me, uh, you don't use C here, chicken, right? Let's use, use H, okay? Yeah. Cow is a cow. Okay. So what I want to know is when how horse equals how many chicken? Okay, right? So based on what you're given here, what you have to do is to, uh, can you figure it out?
Well, first of all, it's trying to simplify the relationship, right? Uh, three pigs equals 24 chicken, then one pig equals how many chickens? Eight, right? Okay. Then two cows equals three pigs. Then I just say, okay, how about one cow equals three pigs? Yeah, two cows equals six pigs, right? So, so one cow equals three pigs. Then one house, one horse equals three cow. So now it's easy to figure it out. And you can write down, okay, one horse equals three cows, one cow equals three pigs. So you can, you can write three cows, right? And the one cow equals um, three pigs, so it's three times three pigs, right? Okay, it's gonna be nine pig. But one pig equals eight chicken, so it's nine, one pig, and eight chicken. Then that will be 72 chicken. So you need 72 chicken in order to exchange for uh, one horse. Okay. Think about that, the one horse equals three cows. One cow equals three pigs. So the one house equals, you, are, you want to find a relation between horse and pigs. Then you can see that you need nine pigs to, to exchange for one horse. But one pig equals to eight chicken. That's why I have a nine times eight. So you have tw needed 20, uh, 72 chicken uh, uh, in order to exchange, yeah, one horse, yeah. You see? So you have to write down so simple, we call the equations, relationship, in order to figure that. Otherwise, if you keep reading it, it's not, it's no way you can get it. It's, your brain cannot easily ins uh, store so much, so much data for you to analyze. Just, you know, some people can do the computation, just close eyes without even touch the pen. You can still say it's five past four, you know, the simple thing you can do, but complicated when it's very hard to, to keep all the, all the, you know, information in the brain, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next problem. I hope, I think that Nina did a good job, okay? How about the other guys online? I'm gonna call your name, maybe, okay? So, um, Crystal, yeah, are you working on the problems? Okay, so here, I'm not going to use the animal's name, I just say one E, one E equals uh, four C's, one C equals three H's, one H equals three P's, how many P's equals three E's? Okay. Okay, E could be eraser, C could be anything, you know, can, right? <laughs> can, candies, we them. Okay, okay. So you can, yeah, you can, you can write down when E equals four C, right? When C equals three H, when H equals three P. I want to, you tell me how many, how many P's equal to E. Okay, so the relationship between P and the E, there's a two things in the middle, C and the H, right? So the relation between E and the P is not, is, is indirect, right? That's okay, right? Can you can you can you write down the relation between E and the P directly? Yeah, you, you know those are just letters. You can represent any fruits. All right.
You get? No? <laughs> yeah, we have four different I type of items. And we set the relation between pairs of you know, items. Like when E, you can use that, you know, for four Cs, right? Sometimes you do that when make exchange. Okay, my Pokemon card can exchange for two other Pokemon cards. <laughs> this is a different type of Pokemon cards, right? You, you like Pokemon cards? Okay, so sometimes you have to exchange Pokemon cards with your brother sisters, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. So one E. No, we can call this car is called E, C car, E car, right? H car, P car, right? So one E, this is a, a, a so it's two E, right? Should be called to eight C, right? Because one equals four C, two E equals eight C. But one C equals three H, so C, so that'll be, eight times three H will be 24 H, okay? Because one C car, you can exchange for three H cards. Now you have eight C cards, so eight, three times eight, 24 H cards. But also this 24 H card and one H card can exchange for three P cards, so 24 times three P, okay? Then, you get 72, okay, so you, get, can, you can get 72. Now, we, sometimes we make a problem a little bit complicated, but this is a, this is how do we do that? You know, we, we get a, so three relationships are pretty simple, so we can use them to uh, uh, quickly figure out uh, 2E equals 72P. Okay, got it? Yeah, let me repeat again. So one E car equals four C cars, right? So, but two E cars where equals eight, four C cars, eight, eight C cars, right? It's double, right? Double of the four is eight. Then one C car equals three H cars. So then you have, already have eight. So eight times three you get 24 H cars. So then so on. So that's why you get answers. All right, so next one. Now we're not going to deal with a special number, uh, 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 items. We are just, uh, just A represents some number, B represents some numbers, okay? So we see that this number A plus itself equals 10. The number B plus A plus B equals 17. Can we figure out A and B? Yeah, let's just fill the gap. We have a two, two we call the equations, right? We're going to solve the equation. And uh, so the number, you have two numbers, we don't know, right? We're trying to figure it out. The so number, the first number is called A, second number called B. A plus A equals 10. What is that number? Yes. Five. Five, yes. So double of A, right? Double of A equals 10. So A is going to be 10 divided by two, which is five. So we already get a five, right? And now you get five, and look at the second one. The second one is B plus five plus B equals 17, right? So what is B plus B now? If it's, uh, you have to subtract the five from 17, right? You know, B plus B plus five is 17. So B plus B must be 12, right? Because 12 plus five is 17. Mm -hmm. Now what is B? Six. Yeah, great. Good job. The six, the reason is 12 divided by two, okay? So this is how do we figure out the numbers, okay? So we have a two, 
unknown numbers. They are they are mixed up, you know, they're related by two different equations. And then we we yeah we can actually get figured out by them, okay? Using those relationships. Okay. All right. Uh, Quite right, good. Now, so six. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh, find the value of A and B. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. Okay? You have a, a the number A plus A plus A itself, and plus B equals B plus B. Okay, A, the difference is going to be <coughs> 12. Yeah. Okay, I hope you can figure it out. No matter which method you're gonna use, you try your best. Oh. Okay, now I have your name here. Um, mine does. Um, Why you don't have a name? You have to put your, you have to put your full name. When you say in home, you cannot figure it out. Charles, you should discuss with the mother. Okay. Okay. You, you still take the home. I know you know you did a win of it. You should discuss with the mother if you cannot figure it out. You should figure out. Okay. So, come on, come on, go back to see that. Yeah, when you do the homework, uh, yes, it's some problems pretty difficult. You try your best. You know, sometimes you have to spend 20 minutes on a particular problem. If you still cannot get it, maybe discuss with the mother or father, get some hints. Don't ask them to do, completely solve the problem for you. Right? All right, so, hey, some still already got answers. Now, let's see. Okay, this is the idea I want to do, okay? If A plus A plus A plus B, right? So, on the right-hand side, you have a one, two B there. On the left hand, I have one B. So can I get rid of that? Yes, right? You still have this relationship. You, you, it does not have, you know, have any change you make. The relationship is getting simpler. Right, you both sides, it's just like a balance, right? The balance, the scale of the balance, okay? The scale, balance. So, so you have A plus A plus A equals B. And then B minus A equals 12, right? Well, then what you should do? So B equivalent to three A's, clear, right? B equivalent to three A's. So why not I get put the B A here? This is actually the B, right? Minus A equals 12, right? Right, because because B is equal to three A's. So B minus A is going to be B is three A, right? B is three A, B minus A is two A, right? Because three minus, two, three minus one is two. So you got a two A, you got A, two A. If two A is 12, what is A? Six, so A equals six. But once you get six, can you get can get a B. Yeah, B is a, a plus A plus A is gonna be three times six is gonna be 18. Okay, so this is how do we get. Yeah, there are many ways to do that, right? I just tell you this is one of the way. You know, you can also write down the equation, uh, simple form, three A plus B equals two B. And then here's a B minus A equals 12. 
you can simply write like this because you have three A's there. And then, then left side is one B, is the right hand side, two B, so you can cancel. So B equals three A right away, right? Three A equals B, okay? The first equation gives you three A equals B, one B. So then, uh, then you uh, then you can you can solve these equations, All right? All right, let's let's move on. Well, let's look at the next one. Find the values x and the y. Okay, I have a three x two y equals fourteen. Then I have a three y two x equals thirteen. Can we figure out x and the y? We cannot by guess and try, that takes too much time, it's unlikely to get the answer. Yeah, we uh, let let's let the next three x plus two y equals fourteen. Two y plus three x equals thirteen, right? Uh, two x three y. Two x. That's the problem. Okay, let's add them together. How about this? This is the idea, right? Add them together. Add them together, you get what? 3x, 2x, you get 5x, right? 2y, 3y, you get 5y. 14 plus, uh, uh, 14 plus, well, that's... Uh, yeah, I think that this is a, I'm not sure this is all right. Yeah, let me just double check the numbers. I don't want to get the fractions. Okay. Yeah, I think there was a typos. This is a, this should be 12, we not. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, they're not going to be integers. All right, so I modify this a little bit. All right, so, yeah, then it's okay. Now. So you 12 plus 13 is going to be 25, right? This is most difficult. 
So you have 5x, 5y equals 15, 25. So what is x plus y? Hmm? It'll be 5. 25 divided by 5, right? Okay. I still don't get the answer yet, but at least I know I get a very simple one, right? Okay. So x plus y is going to be 5. Now can you figure it out? Can you figure it out x? You know, well you can guess and try, but uh, but uh, I don't want I don't want you to guess and try. Okay. I can do the subtraction. Okay, subtraction. Subtract one from another. Subtract one from another, you can see what you can get. You see 3x minus 2x will be just x. 2y minus 3y will be minus y. And that will be, uh, will be you know, did it do the negative uh, numbers before? 12 minus 13 is the negative one. Have you studied this? Not yet? Okay, if it's not yet, I'm not going to use this subtraction. Uh, If then that is the case, maybe you can have to do the guess and try, okay, if you don't have a negative number, okay? Because X and Y are not a big number, right? X plus Y equals five. There are not many choices here. X equals one, Y equals, you know, X equals zero, Y equals five, X equals one, Y equals four, right? X equals two, Y equals three, X equals three, y equals four uh equals two then then also x equals uh four y equals one x equals five y equals zero but but do the quicker computation you will see that when x equals two y equals three is going to be the solution okay that's the quick way to do before you if you right yeah there are not many uh, choices for X and Y. Okay, there are not many choices for X and Y. Yeah. If you don't like to see the negative, you know, numbers, then you know you you know that X and Y both are positive at the very beginning. You know, normally all the problems here have positive numbers. Have positive numbers. Okay. So then you can check. Okay, three times two right plus two times three equals 12 okay and three times three plus two times two equals 13 so that is the only solution okay now if you really want to uh, uh, if you really want to uh, use uh, uh, more a little advanced mathematics to solve the problem is you can you can uh, you can solve for y y is a five minus x, then you put into this equation, three x plus twice, five minus x equals 12, and you're trying to multiply this up. Okay, it'll be three x plus 10 minus two x equals 12, and three x minus two x is just x, and then that would be two, something like that. So I'm not gonna get, get into too much of it. If you understand, that's great. I think Alina understand. Okay, Nina. Okay, so now let's do the next problem. Find the values of O and H. 3O equals 2H. O plus H equals 10. Yeah, 3O equals 2H. O plus H equals 10. <laughs> Yeah, O and H are positive integers. 
Yeah, maybe you can buy guess and try can figure it out, but but I hope you can solve the problem using the stand method. Okay, O three O plus H. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I, I I I multiply both side by two maybe. Okay, so the second equation, three O plus H. So here O plus O plus O equals H H, right? Then O plus H equals 10. How about a triplet? And that's gonna be 30, right? All right, so let's, yeah, then, then you will see that this three O can be replaced by H, two H because three O equals two H. Then you get H plus H equals 30. Now, how many H there? Five H. Five H equals 30, what is H? Six, six. yeah. So H equals six. But once you get six, then O should be equal to four. Because four plus H equals six. Okay. Right? Four plus h equals six. Right. So this is a, a, a yeah. You 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 make it more terms here. Maybe the same idea we can use for the previous problem. If you look at the previous problem, yeah. If you look at the previous problem, uh, uh, you don't use a substitution. You can. Uh, yeah, if you can get x plus y equals five, then you 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 trip it, right? So yeah, three times the equation, then you do subtraction. Yeah, oh well, let's try different problems. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so this is a story problem again. All right. Uh we tried to figure it out. Okay, there are two tanks, you know, different size. Okay, right. the so larger one can hold the five gallons of water. The smaller one can hold three gallons of water. So you want to use those tanks, use these two containers, okay, to weigh six gallons of water. Okay, right. so you have a, this is a, a, this is larger one, five gallons. This is a small one, three gallons. And here you have a larger container here. We want to get six, uh, seven gallons of water, okay? And I want to use that, these two cups to, to get six, seven gallons of water. Can you do that? And how to do that? <laughs> All right. How to get seven gallons of water? Use those two uh, containers. Yes. Okay, step one. Okay, I use a five gallon large uh, uh, I, as a larger one right five gallon water and the pour into the three gallon container okay then what is left two. two gallons two gallons left so so then this is five gallon one that's two gallons left right and this two gallons left and put it here got it put this uh, larger tank. Got okay, two gallons of what is left. Okay. 
So remain stand and put in. Then step two, you fill up this five gallon, uh, filled out to this larger con uh, container, right? Then this also goes to here. So two plus five equals seven. Right? Two plus five equals seven. Got it? Is there any other way to do that? I think this is, um, you know, you, 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 yeah, you, first of all, you fill up this uh, uh, larger container with five gallons of water and you pull to the smaller container, right? And then fill up this smaller container. What is left in the larger container is two gallons of water. Then you get two gallons of water first and you put into the, 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 the tank, you know, maybe there's a larger tank there. Then, then you just use, a, still use a larger container to fill it up with a five gallons of water. Then you get five gallons, so two plus five is seven. Okay, so the idea behind that is, is a seven is going to be five minus three plus five. Okay, got it? Yeah, five minus three plus five. That's the equation we are using here. Okay, so how to get five minus three? Use a larger container, small container, right? Yeah, five minus three equals two. So you get two gallons of water first. You take a difference. All right, so now I'm going to ask you to do the next one. Okay. Yeah, All right, so let's, yeah, we, we have four or five more minutes. So there are two containers in a different size. The larger one can hold nine gallons of water. The smaller one can hold five gallons of water. Can one weigh six gallons of water using these two containers? All right, so we have a uh, nine gallon. This is a nine gallon. The smaller one is a five gallon. And we have a larger tank here. We want to get six gallon. Okay. How can I use this to to uh, containers to get six gallons of water. <laughs> All right, can you try? Can you do that? Think about. Okay, the first step
I want to get one gallon. That's my hint. If I can get one gallon of water, right? The question, yeah, here's a six is going to be five plus one. So the question is, how can I figure out this one? Okay. Right? Okay, let me show you. So how to get a one gallon of water. I use a smaller container and pour all the water into the larger container. Okay, so I get, this is a nine gallon. So I get a 5G, right? Okay, there's four Gs left. So I filled out again, use a smaller container. Filled up with the water, five gallon. I continue to pour into here. So in the smaller container, I have a one gallon left. Okay, one gallon of water remain in the in the smaller uh, container. Okay, so I, I just use a larger container to hold nine gallons of water. Use a, to use a smaller container to, 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 right, to fill up the larger container. Okay, then the second time you have five, five gallons of water, right? But, but you only use a four gallons to fill up this uh, larger container. So one gallon left. So what does that mean? That means one is five gallon plus five gallon minus four gallon. Uh, no, no, no. So this is minus nine gallon, yeah. Hey, that's what is left. Yeah. So five, five, Right, when, you know, then five, five minus nine equals one. Okay, so what is left, you see the picture is clear, right? All right, so very last problem, it's about the order. Okay, so there are five balls in red, white, blue, yellow, and green, respectively. So red ball is larger than the white ball, the blue ball is larger than the yellow ball but the smaller than the green ball. The yellow ball is larger than the white ball. The green ball is smaller than the red ball. Please, list the order, okay, in size, from small to large. Can you zoom into the question? Uh, let it be, okay, wait. You cannot read it? No, I just have my own goals. That's why. So you have to sort them up. Okay, let me <laughs> so five balls, right? So red ball is larger than uh white ball put this way right and the blue ball is larger than the yellow ball but the smaller than the green ball okay you have to write it like this okay then the yellow ball is larger than the white ball you see the yellow ball larger than the white ball then almost there Okay, the yellow ball uh, is larger than the white ball and the green ball is smaller than the red ball. So the red ball is greater than, see, look at that. If then you can easily see, line up, right? Then you can see that red ball is larger than green ball, green ball larger than the blue ball, blue ball then larger than yellow ball, yellow than that.
Yeah, but you have to you have to write down all this in quality to to put them together. Otherwise, just keep reading it. It does not help you because your brain cannot analyze the data so easily. Okay, that's too much information. But if you write down this in quality, you lined up like this. You know, you you lined up this, you lined up this, then then you can then you can see now this one we did not use this one at the, at the very beginning okay then at the end you double check i is greater than w that's great okay then you solve the problem uh all right we stop here and uh, see you next time